The motion picture was one of the earliest forms of entertainment technology. In the beginning, audiences were awed and amazed simply to watch motion recreated from real life. Incredible as it seems today, this film of the Lyon Express arriving at the station caused some patrons to shriek, duck under their seats, and even to faint. But as the novelty of watching scenes from everyday reality began to wear off, early movie makers turned to new subjects. Some began to reproduce skits and comedies in the tradition of burlesque theater. Others began experimenting with the camera to create some of the first movie magic. By stopping the camera and restarting it after the scene had been changed, these pioneers were able to create a series of crazy transformations that amazed audiences everywhere. In this scene, the photographer was carefully replaced by a dummy, creating a spectacle which must have shocked the unsuspecting audiences of the day. Early filmmakers also used the device of double exposure, rewinding the film in the camera to photograph a new image onto the original scene. These early camera tricks laid the foundation for what was to become the art of special effects. People have always hungered for the marvelous, the wonderful, the amazing. Before the invention of movies, it was the magician who catered to this universal desire. So it was no accident that the filmmaker known as the father of movie special effects was a French magician, Georges Méliès. Méliès is most famous for his surrealistic film, A Trip to the Moon. Completed in 1902, it was the first science fiction movie ever made. Méliès, seen here as the first man on the moon, combined elaborate theatrical effects with animation and special optical tricks. He produced some 4,000 films in all, and in the process, discovered many techniques that are still in use today. Milia's inventive spirit inspired filmmakers around the world, triggering a quest for ways to create better and more realistic special effects. This quest was to lead some three decades later to the creation of King Kong, one of the most famous and beloved of all the creatures ever brought to life by special effects. Kong certainly illustrates the textbook definition of a special effect, a technique or device used to produce an illusion of reality in a situation where it is not possible, economic, or safe to use the real thing. When King Kong first appeared on the screen in 1933, many viewers believed he was a real, living creature. To achieve this astonishing realism, the makers of King Kong perfected and combined many different techniques. Here, Kong is a model about 18 inches high, and the captured heroine is nothing more than a tiny doll. Much of the forest and the cave in these miniature sets is depicted by matte paintings, realistic scenes often painted on glass to provide both the foreground and background of a set. In this scene, a previously photographed image of the actress is projected from the rear onto a portion of the miniature set. It's like a horrible dream. The same technique like, is used here to integrate like a film of the miniature Kong model into the window area of a life-sized set. I'm going to stay right here with you. Anyhow, you know Live done. action, miniature sets, and matte paintings, combined with large-scale mechanical props like this giant hand, all work together in King Kong to create a compelling sense of reality. Tim Kong the existing special effects techniques were really refined to a great degree. What turns me on is that we are creating something that doesn't exist and can't be done, we'll say, in any other way except through special effects. Matte paintings, miniatures, and also particularly the rear projection in miniatures. And that is a projection machine that projects a pre-photographed film, and it is integrated into a set, a miniature set in many cases. 
And uh, uh, there were things that were developed, such as the screen for the rear projection uh, was oscillated so that it would smooth out texture of the screen. I enjoyed my experience on it because I learned a lot and I uh, look on that picture today as as many do that it still is entertaining to the newer generations that have come since. It's a little surprising to realize that the most exciting space fantasies of today still use the special effects methods of King Kong. In this memorable scene from The Empire Strikes Back, the Imperial walkers are models about a foot high. Like King Kong, they are painstakingly animated frame by frame. All right, coming in. At New World Pictures in Los Angeles, filmmakers today use the same method to bring models to life. This technique is called stop frame animation. The models have joints which allow them to be moved into different positions. Once placed in the set, the model is carefully manipulated into just the right stance. The camera is lined up to photograph the scene with the model temporarily frozen in one position. A single frame of film is exposed. Leaving the camera in precisely the same position, the model is then moved again a fraction of an inch and another single frame is photographed. This process is repeated hundreds of times. If the movements are made carefully, the model in the finished film will seem to move as if it were alive. The same kind of skill and ingenuity that goes into animating miniature models is also required for the construction of full-sized sets used in live-action scenes. In the movie Android, a variety of inventive techniques were needed to create the illusion of life in a futuristic space station. We're on the sets from Android, and this is the main corridor from the film. This is basically just a lightweight wooden structure with the look hung off of it, or the illusion. In this case, it's made out of foam core, which is an eighth inch of styrene with a high gloss finish on it and aluminum siding. In the corridor, we were dealing mostly with long shots with the camera, and we weren't too concerned about close-ups, so we saved most of our detail work for other places. This is Bay Observation, and here's an example of where we did some of our detail. This is a security locker, and this is just an aluminum box we've made and glued on some buttons, put some colored paper behind it, and backlit it to give the impression as if this was actually a working unit. It went coupled along with this, which is, once again, aluminum with just light bulbs in it. When it was hooked up to the sequencer, it would sequence around, and the alarm going off would give the feeling as if the actors were in a force field when they were over in this section. But since we were in space and we had to deal with outer space in some way, the script called for there to be uh, the use of a window. And we could deal with this in a couple different ways. First off, we could use rear screen projection, which is a special material that you stretch as a screen and then project from behind it. Or you can go with blue screen, which is just blue material that we can mat anything into that blue that we would like to be out in outer space. In this case, though, with the window being so huge, we didn't want to have to deal with all the time what's out there because of slowing down production and such. So we used a, a thin styrene, which would bounce a reflection of the room every time you looked at the window, except for when we wanted to get up there and see what was outside. Basically, all these sets were made out of uh, fairly inexpensive materials and a lot of found stuff to, to try to create the illusion that we wanted. 
one of the things we wanted to do was try to give the feeling as if it wasn't on the ground, as if it was in space and it wasn't on some solid planet or something. And something that worked beautiful for this was milk crates, which we just picked up and sawed down and threw in here and, and definitely gave the feeling as if there was another level or something else below here. Turn out to meet me in the greenhouse. In addition to realistic sets and miniatures, sometimes the script calls for creating imaginary creatures that can be made to move without any camera tricks. Some people call it special makeup effects. Some people call it prosthetics. I don't know what to call it. It's creating an organic structure that moves. This little guy is a good example of what cable control can do. These are all bicycle cables. They're attached to a uh, fiberglass armature, a skeletal structure inside. There are little affixed mechanisms to the foam rubber casting, and it moves when articulated with cables. I'm asked to create a living, breathing entity, uh, something that looks organic, but is articulated in a way left up to my own discretion. And lately that's been cable control, puppets, muppets, masks, just about anything you can think of. Uh, for example, in the film Android, I was asked to create uh, a facsimile of Klaus Kinski's head. Code specifically states Don't tell me about the code. To create the mechanical Klaus Kinski head, first we had to start with a direct casting of Klaus Kinski's face. That is, alginate over his face to create a, a solid dental stone version of him. Based on this, we create a silicone mold. We press clay into the mold, create a Kinski sculpture. Based on that sculpture, we create this mold. From here, we create a core. From the core, we create a fiberglass skull. It's cut, hinged, and mechanized. By mechanized, I mean we put cables everywhere muscles would go. We put the mold together. We create a foam rubber casting, which is about a uh, half inch to a quarter of an inch thick all around. We put it all together, and you have a living, breathing Klaus Kinski head. A little bit worse for wear, but he has a few movements left in him. Looks a little upset. Max 404. He has a little plate in the back of his head. When they remove his hair, and his little panel opens up, his little flashing lights in there where his assassin circuit is. I'm just asked to create things that don't normally exist, but somehow have to for a film. Another very important element of producing successful special effects is the art of creating believable miniature models. A lot of ingenuity went into the building of the model spaceships and space station for the film Android. Our assignment was to create a space station and a police ship, which would be part of a fleet of police cruisers that were out in this sector of outer space. So our model builder worked with the director and came up with some designs that we knew that we could do a good job on within the parameters of the rather strict budget. So basically, our, one of our main techniques of model building is to take a basic structure. The basic structure in this case is a watch display case. And then use model kits that you can buy in the store to add detail. We might use pieces from battleship models or gun models, such as a rifle barrel might look good as part of the engine of a spaceship, or a, a piece from a battleship might look good as a storage tank for a space station. And it's just using shapes and using objects in a creative way and using your imagination. Once the miniatures are built, they still must be photographed in movement and combined with the rest of the special effects elements. 
Let's take a look now at how these models were integrated into this spectacular space scene, created by Midland Production Corporation at their state-of-the-art studio in Richmond, California. <laughs> 